Hey folks, Billy Mays here for OxyClean. Wait, no, no. Mike Zertel here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's exercise tips, tricks, and corrections, pull-ups. Let's get into it, but before we do, let's just remember what pull-ups are for. Pull-ups are for the development, muscle growth-wise, mostly of the lats, but in addition to that, the teres major and the rhomboids and even the rear delts and even to some extent the forearm flexors, the lats and the, the sort of outer part of our back is really what's the target, but fundamentally the, the target is to do really, really good technique, involve as many muscles of the back as we can to get really, really good general back hypertrophy that's biased towards the lats. We don't want to overthink things and think, okay, it's optimal lat stuff. There's better isolation exercises to really zoom in on the lats. Here, lats are a super big important priority, but teres major and other muscles are absolutely involved. Let's get in to the first mistake. The first mistake in the pull-up is not using a full range of motion. Full range of motion in pull-ups means going all the way down for a full stretch where your elbows are completely straight at the bottom. We'll talk in a little bit about if you have to do a dead hang or not. All the way down and then all the way up. But hold on, what does all the way up mean? There are three options that are very, very good. You just have to be clear about which one you're using. Option one, the most popular and the easiest, is to get just above the bar with your chin. The reason it's just relatively arbitrary, it's a good range of motion for the muscles of the back, not the optimal, not the full, but it's a good one that's very clear and easy to tell that you're doing it, which means it's really good for tracking. You know that you count a pull-up successfully as a rep when your chin clears the bar, so then you got a really standardized, good range of motion to go from where you can overload and you can use weight if you want and so on and so forth. Once you get really strong, much stronger, you can eventually do push-ups to the clavicle where every single rep touches your clavicles. Much tougher than chin to the bar, but don't do anything in between. Either get your chin to the bar and go back down or touch each one to the clavicle and count those reps separately. So when you're strong enough to do sets of at least five to 10 touching the clavicle, just do those as that exercise, pull-ups to clavicle, then you can get stronger in that way and exploit an even bigger range of motion. When you get really, really strong, an option for the very exotically strong or light, a lot of uh, rock climbers can do these, are pull-ups all the way up to where you touch your sternum, essentially touching your nipple line every single time. Those are brutally difficult. If you don't have a weight belt or weight to pull with, if you don't have a weight to put onto you, which is totally fine, sternum pull-ups, if you can do sets of 10 to 15 sternum pull-ups, you will have the biggest possible back, at least upper back, that you could ever have. So remember, there's three ways to do pull-ups correctly. Every single one of them goes all the way down, but one of them comes up to the chin, perfectly fine way of doing it. If you get much stronger and you don't want to use a lot of external weight, you can start pulling to the clavicle, probably a little better, more full range of motion, better back development. And for super bonus point extra credit, only if you can do it right, if you're super duper strong, probably not very heavy, pull-ups to the sternum work very, very well. Next mistake, or really point of confusion is, do we do a dead hang or not? Either is totally fine. What it comes down to is comfort for your shoulders. If you do a dead hang in the pull-up, it's a great extra stretch uh, stimulus for your lats and all the other muscles of the back, but it's not like you have to do it. If you do a full range of motion and stop just short of a dead hang, that's totally fine. If you can do a dead hang between each one, you get a little bit of a bonus point as long as your shoulders feel okay. So if your shoulders feel totally fine, do a dead hangs in between that can really standardize the reps and it can give you probably a little bit more hypertrophic stimulus. But if you like to stop just short of a dead hang, then that's totally fine. But real quick, don't worry about what your scapula are doing. A lot of folks mistake pull-ups for pull-downs or some other exercise. We're really supposed to be aware of your scapulae. This is an exercise in which we're trying to do a full range of motion and generate a high degree of force with many muscles. Don't worry about protracting or retracting or stabilizing or elevating or depressing your scapulae. Just make sure you're doing a full range of motion coming up as high as you set, whether it be to the chin, to the clavicle, or to the sternum, whichever one of those three you like, and going all the way down, be it dead hang or not, don't worry about what your scaps are doing, they're gonna take care of themselves. The next mistake is to not have a standard range of motion. Now look, if you're already taking the advice from the last tips, this won't happen to you. Just make sure you are taking that advice. If you say to yourself, this set of pull-ups 
is going to be to the chin. Make sure every rep gets to the chin. And if you're doing dead hangs, make sure every rep gets to a dead hang. If you choose any other range of motion in between, that's totally fine. Keep every rep the same. If you cannot complete a rep to the chin, if you get all the way to here and you can't do it, that is zero reps. You just reach technical failure, stop the set, record whatever rep was that, minus one. So if you did nine reps and the ninth one was to here, put eight reps down in your notebook and move on. Every rep doesn't have to look identical, but every rep has to hit the bottom portion like normal and the top portion like normal. Sometimes people get away from this and do pull-ups with a different range of motion every time. Very difficult to apply a consistent stimulus and make sure you're doing a good job. Very difficult to track. The next mistake is to have an uncontrolled eccentric or descent phase in the pull-up. Folks will pull up really well, they'll get to the height they need, and they'll plop right back down afterwards. This is mildly enhancing of injury risk, although not a ton, you're pretty resilient needlessly enhancing of injury risk, we will say that. But the real problem is the eccentric contraction, like we've talked about in tons of videos before, is hugely stimulative to hypertrophy. You want it. Can you do fewer pull-ups if you control the descent? Yes, but you're not in the gym to do as many pull-ups as you can. You're in the gym to get a giant fucking back. And the way you do that is you go all the way up in your pull-ups and then control the descent. That doesn't mean you do three or five seconds, but at least generate tension through your back as you descend, don't just let gravity pull you all the way down. Next mistake is using body English in order to get up to the bar and count the pull up using your hips, your feet, anything you can, grab another person next to you, push off of them to do the pull up. It's not a good idea because we're here to use our back muscles only to generate the most amount of tension through them to get them to do the hypertrophy. So. If you're doing kipping pull-ups for CrossFit, that's totally cool. That's a completely different exercise designed to generate as much uh, essentially repetitive power attempts as possible. It's essentially an endurance exercise of a specified type. Totally fine, not optimized for hypertrophy. For hypertrophy, you wanna make sure you come all the way up, control on the way down, usually let yourself settle a little bit, and then come all the way back up. You're not gonna use any body language. There's no jerking or anything like that. Only the tension comes from your pulling muscles, which is your back and your arms. That's it. What is the best way to position your feet during a pull-up? There is no best way, but we're looking for one standard. Whatever lets you pull in a high force fashion that's stable and doesn't lead to a lot of gyration between reps. Sometimes folks will keep their feet out in front of them and what that ends up doing is as they do more and more pull-ups, they start to flail more and more, which requires them to do a dead hang, piss away a little bit of time and energy to restabilize. You want a foot position, whether that be both feet tucked into your butt, both feet completely straight, or the feet crossed or anything in between, you wanna find the one that works for you, which lets you do stable rep after stable rep after stable rep. Now, is it okay to restart the reps every now and again, really settle in and make sure that all of the gyration is gone? You might do five or six good reps, but the seventh one, you start swinging back and forth a little more. Is it totally fine to resettle? Totally, but you wanna find a foot position that makes you do that as less as possible. Next mistake is letting grip be a limiting factor on pull-ups. Now, a lot of folks, their grip isn't a limiting factor on pull-ups, so for them, I wouldn't be concerned. But sometimes, even a slightly slippery grip, even if you can do all the reps and you don't fall off, sometimes just having a better grip can actually improve the amount of force that your muscles can generate that have nothing to do with your grip, like your lats, like your teres major, and so on and so forth. So even if you don't think you're struggling with grip, try three things, try some chalk, that can really help, and you might not ever let go of the bar without chalk, but with chalk, you might be able to actually generate more force, get a few more reps every set. If the chalk is not allowed at your gym, or if you need more help, straps are really good, and of course, the ultimate are Versa grips. If you get those, it's gonna change your pull-ups forever, because you'll never have to worry about your grip. You can mind-muscle connect with your back that much better, do that much better of technique, and know that your back and your arms are always a limiting factor, and never your grips. The next mistake is thinking that there is an ideal grip position or handle type for pull-ups. There are no ideals. 
There's a ton of variations you can use. Use one of them for a few months. It might get stale on you. You might hurt a little bit in your elbows and shoulders and use another one. For example, you can do wide grip pull-ups, totally fine. Medium grip, narrow grip, underhand. You can do all kinds of different angles on different machines. Sometimes they have uh, the handles that go like this, sometimes like this. Sometimes there's these weird attachments you can use where it mimics some rock climbing stuff. Sometimes you can grab the, the big kettlebell balls or whatever. All of that is totally cool. What matters is two things. Do you feel those pull-ups in the muscle of your back? If you feel a lot of tension with a low rep pull-ups or a good burn in the muscles you want during high rep pull-ups, you're well on your way there. If it's giving you a pump, you're well on your way there. And if it's after the workout, you feel a good degree of muscle disruption, like, oh my God, like my back feels really, really fatigued in all the right places. That's awesome. In addition to the fact that your shoulder joints specifically, and to some extent your elbows and your wrists are feeling really good during that movement. If someone says, hey, wide grips are the way to grow your lats, you try them and your shoulders hurt, stop doing them. Because the difference in lat activation between uh, close grip and wide grip is so minimal, it's not worth noting. Individual variation swallows all of that up. Start with pull-ups that are comfortable for you, and every few months, feel free to explore different grips, different positions that work better for you, or just happen to be something different to keep you motivated, attack the back from a slightly different angle. There are no wrong answers here, except for the ones that don't stimulate your back and hurt your joints. Going too heavy or too light with pull-ups. No such thing as too heavy or too light in pull-ups, as long as you're in the hypertrophy range. If you're doing pull-ups for sets of five, all the way up to sets of 30, it's totally cool. And the thing is, you probably won't be able to do pull-ups for sets of 30 unless you, either your back is massive, you're really, really small, or some combination of both. Here's a cool idea. If you start to get 15 or more reps of pull-ups to the clavicle, or sorry, pull-ups to the chin, start doing them to the clavicle. If eventually you get strong enough to do really good technique pull-ups for 15 plus reps per set to the clavicle, start trying to do them to the sternum. Famously, Franco Colombo, uh, Mr. Olympia, a uh, famous, famous bodybuilder, said that he actually never used weighted pull-ups and he doesn't use them with his clients because if someone gets strong enough to do a lot of reps to the chin, he switches to the clavicle. If they get strong enough to do 15 plus reps of the clavicle, then he switches them all the way to the sternum. If you can do 15 good pull-ups to the sternum, you're either very jacked, very small, a professional rock climber, or you are out of this world, biggest back ever, and you don't have to worry about using weight. Now, you can use loaded, external weight, you can use a dip belt and pull either, you know, to your uh, clavicle or to your chin or whatever. That's 100% up to you. So there's no right answers here. A lot of folks simply won't be able to get into the higher rep ranges with any of those pull-ups. That's where assisted pull-ups come in. That's where pull-downs come in. It's not that they're better or worse than pull-ups, it's that you can use a slightly lighter weight than your body weight to get into those higher rep ranges. So if you can do pull-ups on the higher rep ranges, sweet, knock yourself out. But if you can't, that's where assisted pull-ups and pull-downs come in. Now, if you don't have access to an assisted pull-up machine, should you do band-assisted pull-ups? Yes if you need higher rep work, but they're not ideal. The force curve that bands generate is the opposite of what you need for maximizing back development. When you want to do a pull-up, ideally, you want the pull-up to be easier at the top, where you're at a mechanical disadvantage, and then harder at the bottom. Bands flip that around. They make it easy at the bottom and harder at the top. It makes the force curve of pull-ups even worse than it is and leads to suboptimal development over the long term. Ideally, what you want to do is have an assisted pull-up machine that beats band-assisted pull-ups every single time. If you don't have one, here's a really cool way to rig one up. If you just train at home or you train at a CrossFit box, all you have is a pull-up bar, get yourself some rope, some pretty thick rope, but rope that's not sticky, that'll slide smoothly over a bar. Get that rope, tie to that rope some weight at the other end, like a 45 pound weight, tie it to the other end, loop it over the actual power rack, and then tie a loop for your feet. Step into it, and maybe you have your friends help you out or something like that to make sure you get into it and it doesn't kill you. Step into that loop, grab the bars, and all of a sudden, as you come up, that weight will go down and vice versa. That's an actual sort of rigged pull-up machine that still does a good job of keeping the force curve away from being too biased to being too hard at the top and too easy at the bottom. Folks, give that some thought. 
That's all the tips we have for today for pull-ups. I'm sure there's many more. Feel out what works best for you. Keep that full range of motion, tension on the muscles, eccentric control, slowly work to add reps or weight or sets. And as long as you keep doing pull-ups like that in an intelligent fashion, your back is gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger until you rip all your shirts like the Hulk and you're gonna walk around shirtless forever. If you can help answer questions in the comments below, please do if you wanna like or subscribe, awesome. And if you have some ideas for other videos we can do on other exercises you wanna see us break down, shoot them in the comments. Thank you so much, enjoy your gigantic back.